I'm convinced that the parallels between comedians and politicians are sky high. And I can describe my day-to-day -day life as a candidate, which would be incredibly familiar to you. It's one reason why I like comedians and get on um, well with many um, of your colleagues. I feel like you get America, you get people in like a different way than other folks. Cause like you've seen so much of the country, you've been in front of yeah. crowds of uh, like completely different types of people and different places at night. They just come to have a good time. Yeah, I mean, I always make this joke that people call me on social media, a coastal elite, just because I live on a coast and I'm better than other people. And, and and then I but I point out like I'm not a co I'm quintessentially not a coastal elite. How many people do you know have lived in you know performed and worked in 45 states for God's sakes? Like I've I've seen the whole country. I'm not I'm not uh I'm not cut off from people's lives. No, you you can't be. And even your description of what for you is like a fairly normal gig is like hey. I'm going to drive to Buffalo now. I'm going to stop in Ithaca, get my like pizza fix on the way and then drive another three hours and then yeah. perform in Buffalo and then stay overnight in Buffalo and then maybe do another. Like, you know, I mean, that's like just normal stuff, at least in good times. Um, and for me running for president, it was wild, Mike, because there were uh, a few different things I was trying to make happen at once. Uh, but a lot of it revolved around whether I could get people in Iowa, New Hampshire uh, behind me. And yeah. so I would be in Iowa, New Hampshire, and anyone who would have me, <laughs> I would be there. It'd be like, hey, you know, we're having like a backward barbecue there. Like, hey, I'm like, I would just show up. And and then uh, I would, you know, talk about uh, like automation and my vision and the rest of it. Um, and it, it was, I think, very similar to what uh performers or comedians would do is where you go to a small town there's a small crowd and like you kind of work your way up um and and so i had to work my way up in those environments uh and i used to tell people and this was more or less true i was like one iowan or one new hampshire um voter uh was like worth like a thousand californians was my joke that's very um, funny you yes. Know? <laughs> yes yes and it is it's pretty close yeah well, it, it was pretty accurate um, so if I went to an Iowa backyard barbecue and there were six people there, I'd be like, 6,000 Californians. This is like a giant crowd. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, my experience of driving through the country over the years, I mean, I've been on the road for 20 years. You know, like I, I, I started as, at 22 driving around the country. My mom's beat up Volvo station wagon. I put about 100 something thousand miles on that car. And uh, my experience has been like I, when Trump came along, I was not surprised that his message of American carnage and all that stuff was resonating because I was I was seeing the country and going like this country is really struggling. So he's speaking to a thing. The problem is the way that a snake oil salesman does. He was selling a thing that doesn't fix the problem. Yeah. Uh, I had the same experience running a nonprofit. I started called Venture for America, not as broadly as you, where I didn't go to 45 states, but I went to maybe 18 states, uh, sure. including Alabama, Louisiana, yeah. Missouri, uh, Ohio, Michigan. And I saw the struggles. Um, and it's one reason why I became convinced that we needed to think bigger about what an economic solution could look like. Uh, and especially when you looked at the towns that had gotten completely blasted by the decimation of manufacturing jobs, like you go there. And so like I'm a serial entrepreneur and I was running an entrepreneurship organization and entrepreneurs are generally very can do and positive. So you're like, hey, you know, let's do something let's start businesses. Let's like make, make something positive happen. And you'd go to a depressed area in the Midwest and the South and you would just feel like, 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 hey, whatever I was going to say, like, I should probably rethink it for this particular group and environment. <laughs> totally, absolutely. Being a road co comedian over the years, seeing the country has actually been great as an artist because it's forced me, similar to what you're saying, it's forced me to focus on what's human about what I'm saying instead of what's referential, what's a cultural reference that might play in New York. You know, they always say like, you know, New York comedians will show up places sometimes if they're too insular and they'll talk about the subway for 20 minutes and people are like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> um, and, and, it, and it is good to sort of see the country and, and understand like what people's lives are like. Yeah, completely. And that, that was what drove me um, I'm convinced that eventually a comedian is going to run for office very, very successfully. Um, so I don't know if it's going to be you, Mike. I don't know if it's going to be someone else. I don't think I have a thick enough skin. You folks take such a hit in this way that's so personal, I find. 
they take such personal shots at you, and I, I feel like it's so unfair. Well, I guess you would understand it better than most, uh, you know, as someone who puts yourself out there all the time. Um, certainly, I do feel a lot of respect for folks who run for office because they do take a lot of shots. I think it is worse for women. Uh, you know, I think it's yes, uh, for sure. Uh, it's, it's worse for um, people of color or pretty much any yes. marginalized group. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's rough. And like, because you're running for office, people have a license to uh, say whatever they want <laughs> about you more or less and then you, you, you're... You know, you have to uh, um, take it in stride. I was just going to make a sports reference that if you had like a number one draft pick sure. for comedian as political figure, yes. <laughs> like, like, like someone who could like <laughs> run for U.S. Senate. And for people thinking about this, like Al Franken yes. uh, did it out of Minnesota. Like he was yes. you know, an SNL comedian, very, very smart. Yes. Uh, you know, like served as a senator for a long time. So this to me is more or less inevitable <laughs> that, that there's going to be a high level. Yes, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think a John, Mul- I think a, a John Mulaney or a Dave Chappelle or an Ali Wong could run and just just by virtue of their pure skill with people would have a ton of traction right out of the gate. So certainly Dave. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. Certainly Dave. Um, John Mulaney makes sense to me. Um, Ali Wong also makes sense to me. I hadn't thought of her, but that's a great, great suggestion. Yeah. Yeah, I guess those can be the the top three draft picks. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you put you can put me in the mix. At one point, when Trump was when Trump was first elected in sixteen, we my wife and I were in such a, a spiral of like, what the hell is going to happen to the country? That I literally said. I may have to run for public office. And I and it wasn't out of any sense of I wanted to. It was <laughs> it, it wasn't it was, out of any sense of desire. No, it was, like it was completely s- obligation. It was simply like someone has to do something. This is a debacle. And that's when I actually started doing this whole thing called I started doing a tour called Stand Up and Vote. And we go to colleges and we put on essentially free shows. We give the proceeds to Headcount and Rock the Vote and Vote.org. And it was like, you know, we've had, you know, John Legend and we've had Roy Wood Jr. And we've and John Stewart did one of them. He came to Princeton with us. And, you know, we've had like all these great people. We're going to do it again in 22. We're going to do it again in 24. I mean, like, I mean, I think voting, I think one of the upsides of, of this election in 20 is the voter participation being so high. And then I think that one of the things that's scary is how many votes Trump got. It's awesome you got activated, Mike. I mean, I felt the same way. Like, I never would have run for president if Trump hadn't won in 16. Um, and you and I were in touch uh, around trying to activate voters in Georgia, like when we were trying to flip the Senate and, you, you know, you were trying to activate young people. Um, so it, it's awesome that you've driven so much energy um, to voting among young people who we all know don't vote at the same levels as uh, we, we'd like in a lot of cases. If Dave ran for like Ohio Senate, he'd probably win that thing. <laughs> I think he'd win. I think, I think he'd win for sure. Yeah, no, I agree with you about Chappelle in Ohio. I mean, I feel like that would be open and shut case. I think he could run for anything in Ohio because he's lived there for 20 plus years. I mean, he, you know, Dave is the first guy I ever, I ever opened for at the Washington, D.C. Improv. Really? Yeah. So you were a Georgetown student. Did you just like yeah. show up and do, do an improv? Because Dave yeah. has deep roots in D.C., obviously. Yep. So I, 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 I uh, my freshman year, I showed up at Georgetown uh, and I, I had I'd wanted to go to Harvard because it, to follow in the footsteps of like Conan O'Brien. Like I always thought like that's you go to the, you write for the Harvard Lampoon. And I thought, and then I got, and you know, and then I got rejected from Harvard. I actually had a ridiculous interview for Harvard where the woman who was interviewing me goes like, why would you, why do you want to go to Harvard? And I go, I want to write for the Harvard Lampoon. And I pull out a binder of comedy writing I had developed over four years. This this would either be a home run or a total strikeout, depending upon the interviewer. (laughs) She was a, she was a lawyer. She had no interest in humor whatsoever. She and then and then this has put the nails in the coffin. She goes, uh, "Is there any other reason you want to go to Harvard other than to write for the Harvard Lampoon?" 
And I said, uh, no, that's the main reason. And and so and clearly it's a huge mistake. It's a huge tactical error, but it was honest. You had passion. You had direction. You had a yes. clear vision. I love it. Except this young man. No, um, <laughs> like that, that's where I would have gone. But then I went to Georgetown and I, was, I, I auditioned for the improv group. I got in. I, I spent four years with those guys, including like Nick Kroll, who I, I cast in the improv group. And he cast John Mulaney. So there was like a lineage of Jack and Jacqueline Novak, too. So there's like a, a really bunch, good bunch of comedians who came out of there. And before me, Jim Gaffigan went to Georgetown. So there's a whole wow. bunch of... Wow, you have yeah. like this whole um, like chain of uh, so, yeah. Georgetown comedians that kind of trained each other, came up together. There's a just, yeah, and actually Jim and I were talking the other day because we last year John and Jim and I did we raised a mil believe it or not we raised a million dollars for the Georgetown scholarship program, which is for first generation college students. Good for you. Uh, and and we're doing it again, God willing, in the fall. And so Jim and I were conspiring about that the other day. So anyway, I I I entered the funniest person on campus contest at Georgetown as a sophomore. And I won, and one of the prizes was to perform at the DC Improv, and they showed me who was coming soon. And I looked, and I saw Dave Chappelle's coming, and it was this is before, you know, this is around Robin Hood Men in Tights. You know, I mean, it wasn't like he had. It the wasn't Chappelle, Chappelle show. show yet. Yeah. It's, yes, and I, and I was like, I, but I love Dave Chappelle, and I opened for him. He was so nice, and he's, you know, I find him to be one of the nicest people I've encountered in comedy. <laughs> 